you're on the Six Strings Element Work, earning the reputation of giving all the right ingredients, uninhibited, and exposing the hard, cold facts about the Watchtower Society. Well, good Sunday afternoon to everyone, and welcome into our program today. Now, you will see that the Six Screens Tele-Network does something different for the most part on Sunday. We get into theology, like the program you just heard, the Knowing God program after leaving the Watchtower. We get into theology. We get into biblical discussion. But don't go heading for the mountains because you hear that. You have a lot you could learn from this program. By, so by all means, stay with us. Now, today, what we're trying to do on this program, uh, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses share their story of being in the Watchtower. What we try to do on this program is get some people to come in kind of impromptu kind of extemporaneously and they can come in and they can voice their thoughts and their track in the watchtower. So we're looking forward to see if we have someone that can do that. Now we did have one or two persons lined up. If you were lined up to come on the program today and you're on the telephone line, hit star six. I know we did have one or two people lined up. Sometimes they, you know, they forget or whatever happens. It's okay. We'll try our best to get somebody to come on. Hit star six. If that was you. Well, Anne Marie, we have a number of people that are listening in on our radio, say, telephone uh, network here, and uh, they, they're not speaking up. We did have uh, one or two people scheduled, but that's okay. That that happens. It's not a big deal. We can kind of wing it here today, Anne Marie, and we're going to try to get somebody to come in. Now, if you have a story, if you're listening in on YouTube, I'm going to put the telephone number up. So I'm going to do that right now. But if you're on YouTube and you've been touched, by the tentacles of the Watchtower, and you'd like to tell your story, share your story of how you've been uh, involved with the Watchtower organization, a good or bad. Maybe you get some good things you want to say, but why don't you come on and tell your story? Here's your time to come out and get it off your chest and let people know exactly how you felt when you were one of Jehovah's Witnesses. There's a number up on YouTube and Facebook, so by all means, give us a call. Well, Anne Marie, how you doing? Sorry, I'm doing really well. How are you, Mr. Energy, my brother? Where do you get your energy from? Well, I eat a lot of hot dogs. I like hot dogs. I like tacos. Uh, maybe from that, I don't know. You got a, you got a lot of energy, too. <laughs> no, I don't. It's all emotional. My body is half asleep, but I'm I'm flying on happy. I'm just every day as one person who escaped from a different cult said, even though that she lost her entire family, her hometown, everybody that she ever knew grew up with, she said, I look at every day as a miracle. And she said to a girl who had just escaped from the same cult, she said, there's nothing you can do about other people and how they treat you. All you can do is hold your head up, keep looking straight ahead, and just keep going. Because you're blessed. You're here. You're free. Do you know that there, to me, it's nothing better than being free? And that is the one thing you can never be in the watchtower. And if you will forgive me, my very patient, kind, loving brother, Rick, I am so always looking for an opportunity to share from the New World Translation, Second Corinthians 3.17. That says, now Jehovah is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of Jehovah is, there is freedom. That one scripture alone, in my mind, proves that Watchtower cannot possibly be God's organization or God's anything, because the one thing you don't have, and I don't care how hardcore Jehovah's Witness you are, you know you're not really free in Watchtower. You're not even free to choose what you believe. You're not free to disagree. You're not free to voice your concern or something that bothers you. You can't disagree with the elders or the governing body. And you're not free to marry who you want to marry. You're not free to go to school where you want to go to school. You're not free to do a job you might want to do. You have to do everything, every choice you make has to be within the parameters of the watchtower structure of approval. 
you are not even free to leave without being severely punished. So since there is no freedom in Watchtower, that alone proves it cannot possibly be God's organization because their own Bible says that 2 Corinthians 3.17, where the spirit of Jehovah is, there is freedom. Hello, do you need any more? Thank you, my patient brother, for letting me go on again. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick that word freedom out here and talk about that for a second. And Marie, right now, we have literally millions of people that are looking for freedom and want to come to the United States. So in the world of humanity, freedom is an essential part of good living, of living that's worthwhile living. There's, there's a lot of people from some of these countries that, that lived in abstract poverty, abject poverty, I should say. They, they lived in all kinds of bad situations. That's why they're coming here for freedom. Now, it's how we feel, too, when we left the Watchtower. You know, when we started looking how they were making so many mistakes and they were scripturally wrong and being involved in things that we knew they taught us was bad, like the United Nations and being involved in child sex abuse and everything else we can talk about with the Watchtower. And we started exiting and we were looking for that freedom pretty much like some of these uh, aliens coming into the country today from different countries. Uh, they're looking for freedom. They've been oppressed. And we were seeing it too when we were leaving the Watchtower that we, we were somewhat oppressed. And now that we're out, boy, do we feel good. Anne Marie, I've never been so happy in my life. And a good part of that is leaving the Watchtower. Really, a good part of it is getting ourselves. We, we couldn't have total happiness when we were one of Jehovah's Witnesses? You couldn't. Geez, how? It's no fun living in a world where everything is being criticized. I don't like that, that suit coat you're wearing. I don't like your tie. Uh, geez, Brother Farron, you know, I think you could have got more time in this month. You only got six hours in. You should have got 10. How could people live in that? But we all did, Anne-Marie. And you were chastised, too. Look at all the stories you told, how these guys really get on your case. Don't do this. Don't do that. Jeez, I'll tell you, it's enough to make a grown man sick. And that's that's why now that we're out, we, we have freedom. And friends, if you're a witness listening to this program, whether it's live here today, or whether you're listening in in the archives when it gets put up and uploaded, give it some thought. Well, we're not here to hurt you. We're here to help you. We're not trying to in any way make your life miserable. We're trying to make your life better. My life was made better by people that have left the Watchtower. When I was first getting out, I didn't know what to do either. But I started contacting people that were apostates, you could call them. But, geez, all of a sudden I said, these apostates aren't bad people. They're living a really good life. They're not living in a life of total control and having to have really be called into the back room because you said something wrong at the meeting. So, Anne Marie, I like the word freedom. I'm on. I'm on the freedom trail with you, really. Well, you know what? I'm on the freedom trail now too because when we, I know life is hard. You know, you have your stress. You know, I have my stress. But every time I start to get really, really down, I turn immediately to counting my blessings. And at the top of my list of things I have to be grateful for is the F word, freedom. We know that Jesus said at John 8, verse 12, New World Translation, I am the light of the world. Whoever walks with me shall not walk in darkness but shall possess the light of life. And John 8, 31, 32, and verse 36, New World Translation, he said, if you remain in my teaching or remain in my word, you really are my disciples. So there are steps. If you remain and follow Jesus, then you're really his disciples. And he said, if you do that, then you will know the truth. And once you know the truth, he said, and the truth, will set you free. And in verse 36, Jesus went on to say, therefore, if the Son has set you free, because there's freedom in Christ, we hear it all the time, if the Son has set you free, 
you will actually be free or you will be actually free. That's in New World Translation. And I also love, I love Paul. Can I talk about Paul, my brother, Rick? May no, I go talk ahead, about go ahead. Paul? I love Paul. He's my total favorite. He says in Galatians chapter 2, he talked about how these false brothers were. Now, remember, he's talking about the Christian groups. There was no watchtower back then, no governing body, no watchtower organization, no group calling themselves a faithful slave. But Paul said in verse 4 of chapter 2, he said that these men, because of the false brothers, brought in quietly. In other words, they sneaked in. He said they slipped in to what? To spy upon the freedom we enjoy in union with Christ Jesus, so that they those who slipped in to spy upon our freedom in Christ so that they might completely enslave us. Are we not enslaved as believers and followers of the Watchtower organization? There is no freedom. And then Romans 6.16, on that same vein, it says, Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slave, Watchtower rights and submission to Watchtower, he said, if you do that, you are slaves of the one that you are obeying. So we don't want to be like that. We don't want to submit ourselves as slaves to be obedient to uh, some other man. And further in verse 6 of Galatians chapter 2, he says, God does not go by man's outward appearance. Did someone want to speak or comment? I hear a lot of noise. Feel free to speak up. If not, I'll just continue because you know when I get on my little preachy shelf in Galatians further, chapter 2, verse 16. And I know I brought it out before. Every chance I get, it's another one. Paul said that we recognize that a man is declared righteous not by works of law, but only through faith in Jesus Christ. That's one time. So he said, guess what we did? He said, so we have put our faith in Christ. We have put our faith in Christ Jesus so that we may be be declared righteous by faith in Christ. That's two. And not by works of the law. For no one. That includes the governing body, the elder, the circuit overseer, district overseer, whoever. For no one will be declared righteous by works of law. That's three times in one verse. Paul said very clearly, the only way you are going to be declared righteous in front of God is only through faith. Putting your faith in Jesus Christ. What you do, how many Bible studies, how you walk, how you talk, it doesn't matter. And he goes on and says it again in the very next verse, that even though we're sinners, we are seeking to be declared, be declared righteous by the only way, by means of Christ. So again, and then in verse 21 of Galatians chapter 2, New World Translation, Paul further says, for if anyone is through the law, if righteousness is through law, through obedience, basically about the flesh, Christ actually died for nothing. My goodness. I mean, were we not ever aware that the Watchtower is nothing but legalistic? They are a tyrannical dictatorship and it's crazily legalistic. Anybody want to share? Yeah, that? hello, Anne-Marie. Hi, go ahead. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm... Uh I'd like to say hello to everybody there in the uh, Six Screens Network world and so forth. I I just was thought of a little bit of a humor right here that goes along good for the theme and everything like that. You know, I think we all know needs no introduction. And Martin Luther King Jr. said that uh, he's free at last, free at last, free at last, and thank God I'm free at last. But who is the person that said? Free at last, free at last, and free at last. Just those three words. Any idea? The person that got 
the person that left the Watchtower Society. Go ahead, Ken. We're listening. You just say what you need yeah. to say. Did you uh, did you pick that up, or did we get cut off? No, Hello? we're not cut off. I know what what it is, Ken. I know I know what you're saying there. In other words, yeah, they they're they're really appreciating. Unless I'm missing something here, but to to me, you said I'm free at last. I'm free at last. I'm free at last. You repeated yourself. Now you said that would be a person leaving the watchtower. So is it? That's right. Yeah. So so I'm just trying to conclude the the, the total message behind what you're saying. So what you're saying is they would say it three times because they're so happy to be free. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, right. All right, yeah, I thought yeah, that... Yeah, Martin Luther King said, free at last, free at last. Thank God I'm free at last, of course. That needs no introduction. But who is it that just said, free at last, free at last, and free at last three times? That's the person who left the Watchtower Society. Well, I'm, I'm sure they're saying that. I mean, I've said it. I've said it so many yeah. times. But, no, well, thank you for coming. Thank you, Ken. But, Ken, let me ask you a question while I still get you on yeah, the phone. Yeah, a little bit of humor. A little bit of humor. Oh, well, a little, it's kind of funny, but uh, it's true. But, uh, a lot of humor goes a long way. But let me ask you a question, Ken, while I get you on here. Because, you're, yeah. you know, I look at you as a pretty astute man. You're pretty much on the ball yeah. out there up in the northern peninsula of Michigan. Now, did you ever feel good, Ken, when you got something off your chest? Oh, yeah, absolutely, all the time. Yeah, see, now that is, see, that's an expression. I, I, I don't know what it is lately, but I've been really picking up on little expressions, little euphorisms, little axioms, whatever you want to call them in life, little sayings that that really are meaningful. They, 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 a few words tells the whole story. And that's why, well, that's why I'm saying, did, you, did everybody, on the, did, all of you guys listening in today, didn't you feel good when you got something off your chest? Now, even when you were a Jehovah's Witness and, you know, you knew that you were doing something wrong, you were committing some type of a sin, no matter what it would be. So your conscience, as it was, told you to go to the elder and, you know, tell the elder that you got something here that's troubling you. And after you told the elder that, or it could have been a Catholic going in a confession booth, Right. But after you told the person what you did and you walked out of that room, you said, whoa, am I glad? You said to yourself, boy, am I glad I got that off my chest? Well, I'm going to tell you that term or that phrase, I'm glad I got that off my chest, has been repetitively said here on the Six Screens program, on this program, as well as many of the others. Now, I'm making reference to people that have come on here and told their story. I, I, I've talked to so many people who have told this story in the Six Queens. When they get off, they say, boy, am I glad I got that off my chest. There's a feeling of exhilaration. Uh, you, you all of a sudden, you, you got this high feeling. You feel really good. So while I'm asking you guys today, if you have been touched by the tentacles of the watchtower and you want to get something off your chest, do you want to feel good today? Well, come on and just spend a few minutes with us and tell us about your track in the watchtower. The telephone number is right there on YouTube. You can see it on Facebook as well. So if you would like to get something off your chest today of you being involved with the watchtower, now, listen, you don't have to tell everything, but tell tell us what it was like when you were a Jehovah's Witness. That, that's not too hard. We'd love to hear from you. So if you're on the telephone I'll line, in, Rick. Uh, go ahead. Who, who is this? Hi, Rick. Uh, my name is David. I'm in El Paso, Texas. Well, David, thank you very much for wanting to come on and be with us. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell my story really quick. Uh, I won't get into too many details, but I was, I was uh, appointed an elder. In my late thirties, I was uh, elder less than two years, and uh, as soon as I saw that chapter fourteen on child abuse uh, reporting, I uh, I had a big conflict because I'm a teacher, and uh, as a teacher, I have to report it right away. I have twenty four hours to report it. So you know, I started looking into stuff, and and um, you know, short long story short, uh, I quit after uh, right before two years, quit being an elder. Uh, ended up divorced and then, you know, right away faded out. Um, but, you know, you guys are talking about freedom a lot. And, um, 
you know, if, if anybody's out there in El Paso, it's not a big city. Uh, you know, we got about a million people, but not nothing like Boston or some of these bigger cities that some of your callers call in from. Um, you know, I'd like to invite people to, 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 to reach out to me. I think a, a lot of, you know, just if people hear my voice here, I think they'll, they'll recognize me if they're in El Paso. We had a little get together last Saturday, um, XJWs. We didn't even really talk about the organization, but it was just so freeing being around each other. Just, um, you know, people that have kind of a similar backstory and, um, you know, I'd like to get your input or anybody else that, that's out there listening how to build a community because there's there's really no support group here um so if, if, if you guys can shoot suggestions on how to build a community here uh of xjw support each other um i'd like to hear it well Anne marie why don't you come on and say hello to our new friend here david he was willing to call up the program today and uh well you have any ideas for david how to start a community uh, Anne marie or anybody listening in how would you what do you think <laughs> Say hello to David. Okay. Hi, David, and thank you for, for talking to Ken. Um, David, hi. I want to welcome you, and we all thank you for coming in, you know, because everybody has a story, and every story is important. Um, uh, the only way I can think of, I don't know if they still do it, but there was a site on the um, network called Meetup, just small letters, meetup.com. And I used to have a support group for ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, and there have been many, many physical support groups. They usually meet once a month, usually the first Saturday of the month. Um, I knew one group in my area that met at a place called 99 Be Bottles of Beer on the Wall, and, and they would always meet in the back every month, and you could hear them laughing and joking and telling stories. And um, there have been many, many groups, and um, I would encourage you to, to try that. Now, I don't know if they still do it, but even though we do have, um, thank God for, for uh, Rick and Susan providing this live platform, even though we do have this live show, it's still kind of cool to have physical meetups. A lot of the meetup groups meet at a park. And everybody's supposed to bring some type of food and they'll be barbecuing and their children running around and maybe a volleyball game or throwing a football. And it's so nourishing because as humans, we are genetically inclined to want to belong to a club, a village, a clan, a group, some group where we know we are an essential part of where we are known you know the old cheers program from the 80s it's nice to go where everybody knows your name they know who you are hey joe hey david what do you think about that david sorry i had muted myself uh yeah i i, I absolutely agree with you um like i said we a few uh friends of mine we met up last Saturday and it was great, you know, so we were, a few of us, we were talking about how to make this a regular thing and, and get it going. You know, we know of, of people that are XJWs around the community and that they don't have anybody. So um, it, it definitely would be great because, you know, we all know what it's like to be shunned, to be, um, you know, have our, our brothers or sisters or parents not talk to each other. And it's a horrible feeling. So, you know, I, I just kind of want to reach out to those people that are alone in in this area. Um, so yeah, that, that's a that's a great suggestion. I've tried doing it through Reddit. It doesn't really work. Maybe because again, it's such a small city. Um, but yeah, I'll give that a try. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, that might be great. I don't know if the, you know. There's the old school way, and sometimes old school seems to work out better. This is just me. I'm old school. But you say you know a few who are also in your position and you have gotten together. So if you could kind of get together and figure out what day of the month or whatever, you know, the third Thursday of every month or something, and all of you agree on a certain time, say at a park. You know, a park is a place where usually there's plenty of parking and it's kind of anonymous, and you can just show up, and everybody feels comfortable, bring your own chair, whatever. And then you could make up flyers, 
and just put it around your area. Like you said, it's kind of hard sometimes to go on the internet, but if there is that, uh, that site meetup.com you might try that but um far as i remember it costs money uh every so many months to renew your subscription so you could post you know we have a meetup but you know what david you would do well to have a group because it's it just part of happiness and this is a psychological fact part of happiness is having something to look forward to rick says it all the time He's dealing with a lot. He works so hard. He doesn't, I don't think that man ever really gets a rest. And he <laughs> says what really helps him is he keeps busy, but he loves having the six screen show to look forward to. That's why he's always so happy because he says that that's my baby. You, part of happiness is having something to look forward to. And Watchtower pretty much took away everything we thought we had to look forward to, which really wasn't all that much. But to have that meet up with you and the people that you know, how about you guys get together, come up with a day or a specific time and place, make up a bunch of flyers and just like you lost your dog, put them up everywhere. What do you think? That's not a bad idea. Word of mouth is, uh, it, it kind of works sometimes. So yeah, I'll give that a shot. Yeah. In fact, David, I, I got some ideas for you as well. Uh, Actually, we had uh, people on this network here. Uh, they were named Joe and Fran, and they got out of the Watchtower two years ago. And they're being shunned, of course, by their family. But their program, uh, they're not with us any longer. Uh, they're still on YouTube, but they were with us for a year. And what their whole mission is is putting ex-Jehovah's Witnesses together. They actually went on the road. They, they went right around the whole country and talked to so many ex-Witnesses. And they, they have a whole reservoir, a bank, if you would, of individuals. And I know they have people in the El Paso, Texas area. So I'm going to give you their telephone number and they'd love to hear from you. You just call them and tell them Rick said to call. Okay. I'm going to okay. give, I'm going to give you their number. They, they, this could get you right. This could get you going pretty, pretty quick, David. So here's their telephone number. They don't mind. They don't mind me giving out in the air. But I've already asked them. So I said, just do it. So their telephone number, they, they're in New York. And their telephone number is 315-221-0130. 315-221-0130. And, and it's, it's Joe is the, the, the man's name, and his wife's name is Fran. And they're really, really, I mean, they're wonderful people. They really, really are. Now, now another thing is... Uh, we, uh, well, there was a protest they had on Halloween. The ex-witnesses had a protest down in Washington, D.C. And there was 223 people that went to that protest. And, you know, no one, a lot of ex-witnesses don't like protesting, but they got 223 people, a lot of people right now leaving the watchtower. So that got me thinking that why don't we have an ex-Jehovah's Witness convention? So I put the word out on our Saturday night program, David, and I started mentioning it two months ago. We're going to have an ex Jehovah's Witness convention up here in Boston area. It's in 2025. The theme of the convention is still alive in 2025. If all goes well, it's going to be August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, uh, 2025, up here in Boston to Hilton. The tickets are free. People can come. And it's just something, if you're really trying to meet a lot of ex-witnesses, we're going to have, this will be the largest meeting. It's a convention. I've already got 146, 47, I guess more people today were over me, but 146, 147 people are going to come. be a great way to meet so many people. We're going to have room for 500, but I think we're going to reach that and even more. So this will be a great way. I like how you came on. And you said, boy, it'd be so good to get together and talk with each other about how we've been hurt by the watch hour and, and, how, and what we can do to move forward. So that's what we're going to do with the convention. So it's something you might think about. Absolutely. I'll think about it. Um, I'm, I'm way down here in Texas, so it would be, uh, be quite a trip. Never been a Boston. Well, we've got uh, we, we do have some people down that area that will be coming up this way. So what we're trying to do is put people together. And it'd be like a, you know, like a little mini vacation for you too. You come up, spend a week and 
but you'll be able to see some of the sites up in Boston. I think you like that. But just to meet some of the people. So, you know, it's still far out. It's about, what's it be, August? I was there about 17 months away. So, yeah, somewhere around there. So it's something to think about. But, no, I'm, I'm so glad you came on today. Now, what, what got you involved? Did we have, you have been listening into the six screens here? Or you just gone on YouTube today? No, I've, I've been listening to you quite a quite a while now. Um, usually Saturday nights, I'd, I'll, I'll turn on the, <clears throat> whatever got recorded that day. Uh, and listen, you, you know, I, I think you do great work up there, um, you know, and, and I just thought I'd call in because, like I said, there's not much uh, of a support group here. I know I got a couple friends out in Dallas and L.A., and they, they have quite a few uh, people that get together. But uh, And I have a friend that, that I just hooked up with again from years ago, about 20 years ago. He's out to... And he, he loves getting people together. So we were, we were talking about, you know, we were just brainstorming. How do we get people together? So that's why I thought I'd call in. Well, you come, you, you call us up next Saturday night if you can. And, and do it, if you can Absolutely. do it live, call up and say, hey, I'm David from El Paso, Texas. And Rick, I talked to you last Sunday. And I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll get some friends for you Saturday night. I can almost guarantee you that. I, I can almost guarantee you that. I'll say, hey, is there anybody out there from El Paso? And we have such a big audience. There's usually somebody that's right around the corner from everybody. So call us up Saturday night. We might be able to help you with that, David. Absolutely. Will do. Thank you, Rick. Well, David, don't you ever change. I'm so glad you came into the six screens. Say thank you very much. Emery thanks you too, I'm sure. Hello. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank uh, you, David. I won't, I Go think ahead, dear. Hello. Go ahead. Hi, Anne Marie. It's Constance, and I just wanted well, to say. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Annie. How you doing? I'm sorry. Yeah. I haven't. Come. We have been so swamped, but I, I just want to let you know I love you, and I, I did receive your call. Um, anyway, oh, awesome. to, to this brother here, David. You know, uh, uh, I just wanted to share something with him. Uh, David, there is an XJW by the name of Rodney Allgood. It's A-L-L-G-O-O-D. And Rodney is, uh, he lives in Las Vegas. I met Rodney uh, a couple times. He's a great, great brother. He's a um, motivational speaker. He's, he's really a great person. And what he does is he does, his purpose is to collect a lot of XJWs and to be able to, be, you know, become a community and help people to become unified and, and to grow, to move forward out of Watchtower. Anyway, you can find him, David, on uh, Facebook, and you can reach out to him. But the, the other thing is he has a Facebook group that's called Empowered Ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, and that's the name of the group that's on Facebook. And all you need to do is, um, you know, find him under Empowered Ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. And what he does is he has, Rodney does this all the time. He'll have, where I met him was down in um, Los Angeles, um, just outside of LAX. It actually, it was in, yeah, it was LAX. And um, there were people from all over. Oh, my goodness. There were people from Connecticut. I was in California at the time from just all over the United States. I think there was one brother that was from Canada. And it was such a wonderful conference. It was like a two-day conference, and it was so wonderful and made people feel so loved and like they belonged in a sense of community again. And he he goes from, like, Chicago. He'll go to um, Boston. You know, he travels all around, and he, he makes it known on his Facebook page, Empowered Ex Jehovah's Witnesses, where he's he's heading. So that's one issue. But even if... You know, you're in uh, Texas where you are, and you might not have a lot of contacts. What's so beautiful about it is that he'll he'll do a Zoom call, and he'll have people uh, collectively come on the Zoom call, and so everyone's sort of united. And like he had a um, a topic here talking about love and forgiveness. So anyway, that that will help you, and you'll you'll be amazed at how many people you will uh, be able to have an opportunity to meet. And then you won't feel so alone. So that's what I'd like to share with you.
That is so encouraging, Constance. Thank you. Because especially when we're relatively new, I went um, over 14 years out of the Watchtower before I ever got to talk to anybody that was from my background. And in fact, that's why I was so extremely happy to find six screens. I couldn't believe there was a whole group out there a venue mm-hmm. through which I could talk to people and listen to people who knew exactly yeah. what I was talking about when it came to Watchtower and the all the issues and the low self-esteem and no education and being treated so badly and bullied and made to feel like you're never good enough and you can't do enough for God and God is so unhappy with you and if you don't do it right, you're going to be destroyed and Armageddon. What a blessing. Thank you so mm-hmm. much for sharing that, mm-hmm. Constance, with David. Mm-hmm. David, are you still there, my dear? Well, I hope he hears it. And he'll probably hear the archives because he did come on and, and shared a little bit. Sometimes people don't share too much. Sometimes they just break in on JW World News and start spilling their guts. You just <laughs> never know when somebody really wants to talk. So um, thank you, Constance. You're always so thoughtful. And God, I can't believe the blessing of Bram and Joe. They they are like, I mean, wow. They're just like, getting. we're getting it all together. So it, it's a good thing. I wish I had gotten that phone number. So you and Dick, I assume, are going to be at the convention in Boston next year, Constance? Yeah, honey, we definitely are. I hope I hope you're able to make it, Anne Marie, because you know we'd love to see you again. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Oh, we're but getting I am we can, honey, to get you out there. That's for sure. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, because I sure would love to meet everybody. And but I'm still so grateful to you and Dick for coming out. I, I still can't believe the day I, I heard knock knock, and there you both were grinning. <laughs> wow, what a blessing. That was a that blessing. Was, yeah. You guys were so, so sweet. So sweet. Okay, well, I was just wondering if anybody wants to share their story in the in the uh, Watchtower. You know, everybody's Watchtower story is different, but yet everybody who listens to someone else's Watchtower story, we all get it. We all like, mm-hmm, yep. I know how that was. I know just what you're talking about. It's it's always that way. It's always that way, right, Constance? Okay, anybody else yes, on the line? That's Sorry, I'm in the Oh, I wanted I, I wanted to say you. thank you to Constance. Also, I didn't know about this um, group. Um, with uh, Rodney, Rodney Allgood, I would yes, like honey. to contact him also because, yeah. uh, well, Nebraska is very sparsely populated. In fact, the mm-hmm. whole area, you know, between South Dakota, Wyoming, and East Northeast uh, Colorado is very sparsely populated. I call where I'm living now is a big city, and there's like 25,000 people. And mm-hmm. where I moved from before here, there wasn't even a thousand. But then where I moved there, there was like over half a million. So right. anyway, it's just I haven't met any ex Joe's witnesses in person. Well, yeah, I have. Brandon and Joe and and Dan and Angela. They both come by here, which was absolutely unbelievably thrilling. I was so just I was over the moon happy, and I've been I come on um, six screens several times and said, does anybody live close to me? I've got lots and lots of ex-Jehovah's Witnesses friends through uh, Fran and Joe and through uh, Rick at Six Screens. In fact, all of my friends I have met through those two avenues. And uh, without that, I just don't think, I don't know where I would be, you know, emotionally and mentally because it's given me so much of a of a relaxed uh conscience because you know you were talking about freedom um and marie um it's so wonderful to have the freedom 
to not be worrying about who's watching you for every little thing just to see if you're going to make one little mistake so they can exactly. run to the elders and tell like and and just and not having the fear constantly of making Jehovah mad and him killing us right then, you know, or something. Yeah. Even about the new system, there was never any salvation. We were, you know, we yeah, we were supposed to grow back to perfection and all this and that. So once we were perfect again, if we made a false step, bam, you know, zap you, you're dead, you're gone, you know, and. The fact that they, he was going to let Satan out, you know, and try to tempt us again, you know, after we're perfect. But all of that's not happening, you know. And I just feel that freedom. Of, I know one time I did something, and my uncle, well, my dad and my uncle were both elders. And they were always talking about the, um, the um, what is it, the unforgiven sin or, well, you know, the the sin that there was no forgiveness by God for. But we we never quite knew what that was, you know. So everything, every time I made a mistake doing anything, I would I would ask my dad, I would ask my uncle, is that the, the why do you call it, is it the unforgivable, unforgivable sin? What do they call it? I already forgot. Anyway, I've been out a long time, but... Suppose, yeah, suppose if you grieve the Holy Spirit, supposedly that's supposed to be a unforgivable sin. That's the only thing I've ever read in the Bible, which I don't even yeah. know if I've done it or if anybody has. But yeah, go ahead, Debbie. Well, I mean, that was something I was always worried about. What, you know, did I do this or did I do that? What did I do? You know, I was scared all the time because I thought, well, if I've done that, there's no hope for me. But I never really knew what, what it was other than what you're talking about, you know, blaspheming his name. That was uh, the only thing I knew, but I was always scared, you know, and I don't have that constant fear hanging over me anymore. And I feel I feel free to finally be who I am, you know, and uh, and I'm I'm a much, much happier person. Uh, well, I never was happy before this, so it's, you know, this is the first time I've ever been happy is since I've been away from, you know, the Watchtower organization. And just those two things of not worrying about somebody constantly, and, and that is such a relief because it, it didn't matter. You could just walk out your door wearing the wrong thing or something, and they're going to call the elders and like, oh, she should do it, you know, just something stupid and 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 it shouldn't matter it's not a salvation issue you know it doesn't matter if a brother wears a, a purple tie or something like that and and um anyway that's all i was gonna say but oh and amarine i love you so much you are so intelligent and so um empathetic and understanding with people and Connie, I love you too. I just I love you and Dick so much. I just y'all just all of y'all are wonderful people. And ha- having Dick Screens and Joe and Fran and all the friends, you know, just we everybody's just a phone call away. Or a or a video call away. Mostly we do just phone calls. But I, I am so happy that I do have such a, you know, wide variety of, of people all over the country and in other countries too, you know, and, and this is the, this is more of the worldwide brotherhood with, um, um, kind of love that, you know, is, oh goodness, I can't think of my words, um, true love, you know, we're not constantly, uh, well, I can't even think of the kind of love I was trying to talk about. It's, but it's real love, yeah. real brotherly love. Yeah. 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 Well, you know what? Thank you so much, Debbie. You know, you, you. I don't hear you speak up all the time, but I really appreciate how you not only bring up really important things, but you're very articulate. You describe very well to where those listening can understand on an on a, a, an emotional level, you know, like you said, that feeling of always worrying about doing something wrong, a fear of, 
you know, Jehovah being mad at you or this or that. And, you know, we were taught that we were living in a spiritual paradise now. We were the happiest people on the earth. And weren't we thankful and weren't we grateful? And I was always feeling guilty because I was struggling so hard to feel the way I was supposed to feel. And and it is a stress and it's a burden. And Jesus did not die to give us enslavement. He mm-hmm. did not die to give us that. And then when you were basically what I thought you were saying, you were alluding to what we were taught was the whole association of brothers. You know, I used to sit at the venue for the district convention on the last day after the last song and prayer, and I didn't want to leave because I knew I had to go back to the world and everyday life in the world. And I would sit there with my children until the last person was gone and there was nobody left in the entire stadium but me and my children because I didn't want to leave. That's how much I believed. I believed in this organization. I thought it was so special and that I was so, um, how do you say, blessed to be part of Jehovah's organization, to have the truth, to, to know that I, you know, that Jehovah loved me and all he wanted was for me to do my best. You see, that's what, that's what they taught Jesus sacrifice did. This is what a lot of people don't understand. Jason Zelda brought it out really well last week. I mean, uh, I think two weeks ago. Jesus sacrifice paid for all of our sins and that it was the highest, highest possible price that could be offered and paid was Jesus' blood, his innocent blood in his sinless, perfect body. He willingly not only sacrificed his body, but he willingly gave up his position in heaven because the Bible said that he emptied himself of his spiritual body. He doesn't say that his father did it. He said he emptied himself and took on a slave form. Just like in the book of John, first chapter says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And then he tells everybody whatever, and then he offers his perfect body. And for the witnesses to get around, you know, it's like people have to understand, they take whatever is in the Bible and they will twist it and make it seem like God's word is saying something completely convoluted and twisted. And what we were taught as Jehovah's Witnesses, that the sacrifice of Jesus meant, and this is what they taught, that we are all... Yeah, hello, Anne Marie. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't Hopefully interrupt you. But, okay. uh, yeah, I was... I, and this is Ken again here over there, and I've been listening to the program with interest here, and I'm happy... I'm very happy we got these callers in here. That was very interesting, that one from El Paso, Texas. So uh, that's what we want. We want some phone calls in here, and we want some people to come forward and let us know their experiences here at Six Screens. I've been, to ministry, school for, I've been to ministry school for four years. I've uh, been through several different religions, like about 15 or 20. None of them satisfy me. I don't belong to any of them anymore. I don't even have recommendations for anything. But when it comes to the unforgivable sin or blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, I cannot, uh, there is no church that comes up with a positive and definite answer to that question. You ask 101 different ministers, you get 101 different opinions. In addition, I'm a Bible scholar and a research analyst. I can't find any competent research that gives you a positive and absolute definition to that phrase. So that's not the only time in the Bible that uh, we find that. There's, we find that several times. That's a story for another time. But So if people don't understand that particular phrase, don't feel bad. Just... Uh, Life goes on and everything like that. Just keep living life and so forth, and just don't worry about it because uh, we will get the answer someday, but we don't want to get hung up on that question. Hello, Anne-Marie? Yeah, go ahead, caller. Hi, Anne-Marie. 
This is constant. I just wanted to I just wanted to add something here. You know, uh, and thank you, Debbie. That was very sweet. I, I was going to say, with regard to this empowered XJW group, I'm looking at it on Facebook right now. And uh, Rodney just posted this like 44 minutes ago. And there's a, a meetup group of empowered J XJWs in Sacramento. There's a restaurant that Rich and I went to. Uh, then there's another group that happens in Denver, Denver, Colorado. There's one in Cleveland, Ohio. They have pictures of all these people. And Cleveland has quite a few people. And then there's one in San Diego. And they're just in Vancouver. Vancouver, British Columbia, and Dallas, Texas. So, you know, the word's getting out there for people to be able to meet up. And I think it's a wonderful thing. And Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona. And he has it on his Empowered XJW uh, Facebook group. What's interesting, you know, Debbie, uh, you had mentioned that sometimes you feel so alone. I mean, even though I was in California, I had thought the same thing. I thought, you know, all these XJWs, it's just through a phone call on six screens. You know, I really never met these people. <laughs> you know, it's only on, on uh, Facebook Live or on, on the phone. But when you really get to meet people, you feel, uh, or even through Zoom and so forth, but especially if you get to meet people, you really feel like that sense of community is back that we lost, that was lost with Watchtower's crazy shunning policy. And, you know, it really makes your heart very, very happy and full of love and happiness. So it's all good. So that's just what I wanted to share. Thank you. Uh, can well, I say something? The word I would for, the word I was looking for was unconditional love. In the XJW community, we have unconditional love for one another. And that in itself is such a freedom type thing. You know, we don't have to worry about, you know, well, they don't love me anymore because uh, I wore a purple skirt or something, you know. But uh, I that is one thing, though, I do miss from being a Jehovah's Witness, I can honestly say is I, I felt, I did feel somewhat as a part of a group. And and I had friends, I thought, in, you know, that I hung out with all the time. But like, you know, you said, um, once you're not part of that anymore, you do lose that sense of community. And a lot of the friends I'm the big shows witnesses I'm really friends with don't have that, you know, either. We just have a, we support one another because a lot of people are still chemos, you know, they, they, they don't want anybody to see them on Facebook or, you know, in person or even know their real name. And we have to respect that with one another. And, uh, then some of us are just out there like, Hey, I'm so-and-so. I like you. Would you would you like to have a group together? <laughs> you know, or something like that. I'm that's kinda how I am. And I do miss the in person association. I would love to go to a Denver meetup. I don't have a vehicle and I can't drive even if I had one because of being handicapped. And I wish so bad that there somebody would in that group, the meetup group, lived closer to Nebraska. That might come pick me up and just let me, you know, have that in person, the hugs. I, I always talk about how important a hug is. And a, a hug is something you can't get without giving one back. And I, I miss that and, and the in person visit. So, anyway, I just wanted, I, I talked too much, that that word I was looking for was the unconditional love that we have now. Debbie, you are a treasure in the Six Greens family, and you do not talk too much. Everything you say has importance. Everything you say matters, and everything you say, everyone listening and hearing you can relate. So please don't ever feel that way. You know, part of the scars that we bear, I personally believe, part of the scars that we bear from being in Watchtower is feeling like, we're wrong. Something's wrong with us. It's low self-esteem, lack of self-confidence, feeling like we have to apologize or explain 
like, oh, gee, I'm bothering you. You know, I felt, I have heard so many people, but you know what? You have lived through tremendous, tremendous hardship and terrible things. I, you know, I remember your story and it just, it, it was like, oh my God, where's my number to Ripley's? I can't believe you have survived and gone through what you have gone through. And yet you have so much love and so much kindness. And, um, you know what? I just say, put it out to the universe, pray to Jesus, pray to heavenly father, put it out to the universe and focus on getting to a group. And you know what? Miracles happen. God is really good about miracles. Sometimes we have miracles all around us. We don't even realize it because it's a miracle and the Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. And and I'm really glad you came on today and I'm so glad for Constance and her information. Anything you want to add? Oh, anything you wanted to add to that, Debbie? Just thank you. I, I really appreciate you saying that. And, um, I do appreciate being able to be open without, I don't have the fear of always being judged about something. And yeah, I've had to really work on not saying I'm sorry about everything. Just taking a compliment was a big deal because every time somebody would say something nice, I would say, yeah, but, and going, yep, criticize myself. And that's been a, that's been a big deal. But thank you so much for your work, Anne Marie. I really appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you too, Debbie. You're a very, very special lady. And, um, you know, Watchtower, when you think of it objectively, they hurt us so badly. And, and, you know, you talked about real friendship and being able to speak without feeling like, you know, somebody's going to judge you or whatever. You know, we went through so much hurt trying so hard. It's almost like being in an abusive relationship. If you compare a wife living with an abusive husband who's always putting her down, she never does anything right. She doesn't know how to keep a house. She doesn't know how to be a good mother. She doesn't ever cook anything good enough. She doesn't know how to wash clothes. She doesn't dress right. Her hair's always wrong. You know, she doesn't speak right. Nothing she does is good enough and she keeps trying and she keeps trying and she keeps trying trying so hard because we all want one, you know, the number one, number one, according to Dr. Phil, the number one human need, and it's not love. The number one human need is to be accepted. Not judge, not if, if you would just do this or stop doing that or work on this, just being accepted. We were never really accepted. And the number one fear, believe it or not, according to Dr. Phil, is to be rejected. You think Watchtower and their tyrannical controlling dictatorship doesn't know? They appeal to your need to be accepted. So you get sucked in whether you were raised as a child or you fell for the cult recruiting indoctrination However you came to be a Jehovah's Witness, I call them Watchtowerites, because they're not Jehovah's anything. They are, their God is the Watchtower straight up. They are always looking to feel that they're accepted. But you never quite get there. That's why a lot of times uh, different ones refer to being a witness as being on the hamster wheel. No matter how long you go, no matter how fast you go, you still are never going to get there. Not ever. And you're always made to feel you're not good enough. So Watchtower, like so many cults, appealed to your natural human desire to belong, your natural human desire to be accepted, and the natural desire of a human to feel that you matter to a group that you belong to. And like you said earlier, now, as ex-Jehovah's Witnesses in the ex-Jehovah's Witness community, with David, with Rick, with Fran and Joe and Constance and Mike and Kim, all of us together, we have love for each other. We understand each other. We get each other. We might not agree with a lot of stuff. We may have completely different viewpoints on different things, but you brought it out very well, unconditional love. And Constance said it too. 
right? Isn't that what we have? How in the world can you top that? How can you top that? Anne Marie, I was going to, I wanted to add one more thing. If there are ex Jehovah's Witnesses, I mean, Jehovah's Witnesses listening, the, the way the Watchtower Society and the governing body manipulates people causes a lot of mental illness. And many times, really bad mental illness will lead to someone that feels so worthless and so unaccepted or so not loved that it often leads to suicide. And I think as a group, as a whole, Jehovah's Witnesses have the highest rate of mental illness. I mean, it can live, you hear people saying, oh, that drives me crazy. Okay, well, being in a cult like this, and there's other cults just as, well, I know the Mormons, have, they have a, a very similar, you know, outlook. And it's just that they were, uh, they were born and, and know how to make money. And they're, they're, they're better with that. With us, I was born in, never, never had a, a retirement or anything put aside. And I mean, it was almost 50 years. I've not been now. I'm 63. I have no retirement. So, I mean, don't take that kind of stuff for granted. And just make sure you do plan for the future and not because you think Armageddon is just around the corner. I'm 63. My parents told me back when I was a kid, don't worry, you'll never start to school. Armageddon's coming. Don't worry, you'll never have to get married. Okay, I got married. You know, and then it was like, don't have kids because Armageddon's coming. Well, I had kids anyway. Now I've got grandkids. And I have my first great grandbaby on the way. And if I had listened to the Watchtower Society and their rules, I wouldn't have any of that. And that is a blessing. Well, having kids is both a blessing, happy, your greatest happiness, but also your greatest sorrow. Sometimes, you know, they, the pain you have to go through sometimes. But it's still all worth it. It really is. And uh, anyway, I'm just saying, you know, if you if you are a Jehovah's Witness, just be aware if you have a lot of depression or suicidal thoughts, God doesn't want you to have that. He wants you to be happy. And if you feel miserable all the time, how can you possibly be serving the right God? Because you know, it, we're supposed to be happy. And all through, the, especially the New Testament, it's referred to, you know, that, it, that anyway, just, I get, I get emotional and I can't say it. But just remember that if you're not genuinely happy, you're missing out on something very wonderful, like God's Holy Spirit truly being with you. And, um, uh, and he doesn't want people to kill themselves, that's for sure. Because, I mean, that's taken, that's just, that would be like grieving the Holy Spirit, really. Because you're not looking to the right Savior. And um, just remember that, please. Then you will find unconditional love and acceptance. And you will be part of our group, our HJW community. And we do, we love one another, and you will find happiness you've never known as a Jehovah's Witness. Really, I mean, I, that, I can say without any reservation. And I've been through hell and back, and I felt so worthless before. And I've been, and I've tried to commit suicide more than once. It was a long time ago, and it was over some of the terrible things, you know, like CSA and things like that. Um, that caused it, you know, and I, I just fell for it hook, line, and sinker because I really thought I was worthless, but I don't anymore. I've become an empowered woman. I'm, I'm, I am on my own, which is, you know, I thought I would never be able to be alone. That was something that I could not imagine. But since 2019, I have been 
And I've actually learned to enjoy my own company, <laughs> you know, because I can do what I want when I want. And and that's that's pretty nice, too. But anyway, I'm, go ahead. I'm, you I'm go, done. girl. You go, <laughs> girl. I hope you're proud of yourself because, you know, like I said, you know, and you said, too, you know, we have freedom, freedom, freedom to disagree, freedom to argue, freedom to not do this or we can believe what we want or we're at different stages. We're free to love ourselves. You know that scripture that says they'd always throw it in our face because, oh, you need to be humble. You know, like you, you would, I, I used to walk around hanging my head saying, I'm sorry, all the time. I'm such a bitch now. I mean, I'm not mean, but what I mean by that is I don't let anybody walk any, on me anymore. I have personal boundaries. I'm loving, I'm giving, but I am not a doormat. And in in the watchtower, I remember the scripture being thrown in my face, you know, don't think of yourself more than it's necessary to think. Like, I, I don't matter. Everybody out. And then there's that scripture that says, consider that others are superior to you or better than you. Or So those two together basically said, no matter how humble you are, you're still not good enough. And I went back later after I pretty much recovered. I'm, I'm still carrying the scars of indoctrination. But I remember thinking about that scripture. And Paul was saying, don't think more of yourself than it is necessary to think. And my own Jehovah's Witness mother said to me, she said, Anne Marie, if Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, loved you enough to send his son to suffer and die for you, who are you to say you're not good enough? Don't talk about Jehovah's property like that. And I went, whoa, my indoctrinated mother has a lot of wisdom. But then again, she was a dedicated Christian and gave her life to Jesus before the cult got her. So a lot of things make sense. But it doesn't that make more sense that the Lord values us and Jesus valued us enough to suffer for all of us because it says in the Bible that he wants us to be happy, to have paradise, to whatever. And I, I don't know where it is, but I remember something about a scripture that said something like, man has not conceived in his heart the things that God has in store for those who love him. God didn't create us so he could have us suffer and cry and be miserable and depressed and suicidal. Does that even make sense? If the Bible says it, what, 1 John 4, 8, that God is love, I mean, you wouldn't do that to your child. You're just an imperfect person. But you ideally want your child and your your grandchildren and your new grand great grand baby coming. You, as an imperfect person, you want the best. You want your children to be happy. Is God going to want any less? Watchtower has twisted so many minds and hearts. Like Romans said, Paul said, no natural affection. They take away everything, your ability to think, your ability to love, making you think that it's the serving God to turn your back on your own mother, your own child, your grandparents, even your own husband, your own wife. That's pleasing to Jehovah God or to Jesus. No, that is twisted. And to think that's normal, twisted. How are we doing on time, my brother, Rick? Well, a little over time here. We're going to get to the news, I guess, Anne-Marie, for the Sunday edition. So take a couple more minutes and go ahead and wrap the program up. Yep. Okay. I want to thank you. I hope everyone, if you are afraid to use any other Bible but the New World Translation, you know what? You can pray to God for the Holy Spirit to guide you. I believe that's in Luke 9, 9 through 11. Um, you know, Jesus said very, very clearly, do not be afraid to pray for Holy Spirit. Jesus said he would send the helper, the Holy Spirit. He promised us. And I remember Watchtower telling us, oh, don't pray for Holy Spirit. You could get a demon. You know what? Don't be afraid. If Jesus said your heavenly father knows what you're praying for. If your son said he was hungry and asked for a piece of bread, would you hand them a scorpion or a serpent? 
we can trust in God's word, the Bible, and we can trust in Jesus and Heavenly Father. I want to thank everyone for coming in. Thank you, Debbie. We have missed you. And you bring up such great points. We want to thank our brother David for coming on and his bravery. We want to thank Constance for coming in and Ken. And uh, just everybody, just remember how blessed we are. And please thank our brother Rick and Susan for the hard work they do. Thank you all for coming in. We're going to go to... Uh, Rick and Sunday edition JW World News. Rick. Well, there you go. Thank you, Emery. Well, we're very good. Thank you for thanking everyone. Well, we had a good program. It was good, kind of spontaneous. Uh, getting that call from David, that made things well. But anyways, we are on a run here. We got JW World News. That's coming up next right here on the Six Screens Tele-Network. So stay with us. And uh, we've got more programming to come up in the future. Four o'clock, we have the Christian Court. Hey, if you haven't listened to that program, that program is quite the program. It's all about Christians. You know, there's so many Christians. You know, there's thousands. I believe there's 42,000 Christian denominations. And, you know, sometimes Christians, even though we all want to be on the same page, sometimes we have different feelings on things. Sometimes uh, Christians have peculiar questions that they would like answered. Well, that's what we do on the Christian court, 4 o'clock right here on the Six Greens Tele-Network. JW World News coming up next. Stay with us. We're going to end this stream. Going to go over to the other studio and get the wheels of progress moving.